Hello, today I'd like to show you a cognitive chatbot. This chatbot was written with JavaScript and Node.js and we're simulating a, a banking chatbot, like a chatbot to support a bank customer. The code is all open source so I hope you get a chance to try the code. Um, you can you can install it and run it. The, the code is here at github.com slash IBM slash Watson Banking Chatbot. And if you look at the README, you'll see here we have the instructions. If you were to install it on a, a Bluemix account, like a you can get a trial account and press deploy to Bluemix to get the chatbot up and running in Bluemix, and it's all pretty automated. You can also run it locally, and the steps are right here to clone the repo, set up the services, and run the application. But let's take a look at what it can do. Now here I'm already running the chatbot. Uh, there's no real login. We didn't we didn't do that part, but obviously if you're working with a bank chatbot, it would already know who you are. And in this case, it knows who I am, and it says I have notifications. Let's take a look. I press the button for yes. It says I have a credit card payment pending, and it also wants to recommend gifts for my wife's birthday. Let's just do the credit card payment. I click the button, and it's like entering a command pay credit card. It looked up my balance and wants me to confirm. I'll say yes. It's going to send me a one-time passcode to authenticate before it will submit the payment. Now we didn't really do that. That's just for dialogue purposes in the demo. So I'm going to put in one, two, three, four, and it submitted the payment. So that's the good example of back and forth with a conversation. And also these buttons are part of the response, which if, if you look at the UI code for this, it's really just uh, input and output back and forth between the chatbot and the server, but we're actually injecting these buttons so you don't have to type in yes, you can click just a, a yes button. The other thing this one can do is, let's see, there's some other examples. If I say show me my account balance, now I could have typed that in a lot of different ways. It's just natural language. People are going to ask what they're going to ask, but Watson recognized that it was an account balance request just based on some examples of what an account balance request might look like. And then again we have this Node.js server that took the conversation dialogue, turned that into an action, and it knew it it, it, it told the app you have to look up these balances to add that to my response. Now we're also doing some natural language recognition outside of conversation and for that I'll do something with the location. If I say um, do you have a branch in Mumbai? Mumbai is a location and natural language understanding recognizes that. So in this example we now have not just a conversation and an intent, which is a branch lookup, but that location was plugged in like a parameter for the lookup. The conversation recognized that. In this case, an action was sent back to the app that says, do a branch lookup given this location, Mumbai, and it looked up the address, etc. I have an example as well where we want to look something up from frequently asked questions. In this case we're using discovery and passage retrieval. If I ask a question like um, can I use an ATM in any city? There's a Word document that has a list of questions and one of them is related to these in-touch systems and whether you can use those to withdraw money and the answer is right there it says yes you can use it and in our case Watson recognized the question well we we actually we took it to, from conversation we sent it to discovery and it recognized that the question we asked matched the one in the document even though they were actually quite different but the intention was the same and that was the best passage to answer the question and it gave me just a snippet out of that document, it, out of a Word doc, and I just parsed out the answer to that, and I'll show you how that works. And one last thing is emotions. We're using Tone Analyzer to detect emotion. So if I say, I am really mad at you, 
conversation itself didn't have a lot of dialogue involved with emotion, but what we did is we used tone analyzer on the text before it got to conversation. We gave it a com a, an anger score, and the conversation right away says, if your anger score is over a threshold, do this, I'm sorry, let me send you to support message. Um, and that was really very easy to hook in there if you have tone analyzer involved. So let's take a look at how this works and go and look in Watson Conversation just a little bit and then a quick look at the code. So in Watson Conversation, you have intense entities and dialogue. An example of what intents are, I'll look at this account balance. We gave it a bunch of examples of an intent to get an account balance. And you can see all these examples for how someone might ask for an account balance. Now I typed in one that was a little different than all of these, I think. But based on machine learning and using these examples and some understanding of how to throw away the noise and get at the in real intent, it recognized my question. So that's how you do an intent and the example here was account balance. Entities we didn't use a lot, but you can enumerate certain entities to feed into the dialogue. Um, we sort of used location that way, but it was, it was fed in as a context parameter. And then we get to the dialogue. The dialogue here has a conversation start, and we went through this. Right away it knew there was a person. This, is a, this person has notifications, and this is where we actually returned a context that included those buttons. So there's a response text, but also uh, these yes, no buttons. And then if yes, it follows the tree this way. It says, well, if they said yes, we could pay the credit card or we could suggest gifts. And again, it, it follows through this tree until it knows, oh, here it actually does a jump to a whole other part of the tree in doing the, um, the, the pay to, payment to the account. And that's where that one-time passcode um, text came in and it continued the dialogue down there. So that's how you can do branching and just a, a back and forth conversation and again an example here showed here you see the response you can include in our case some some, uh, some buttons that goes back to our JavaScript UI and also in some cases we send back a context I think uh, there's a good example here with account balance. Not only did we recognize it and have a dialogue tree, but there's an output context. I mentioned the input context we're using for emotions and locations, but there's also an output context where we can say, look, we went into the conversation, we have some response text, but we want to tell the app to do a balance lookup. With the, for this account type. So let's go take a look at the code and how to implement some of this. So again, this is Node.js and it's really easy to create a server with Node.js. Here, in, right in the root, we have a simple file. This, the file is called server.js. We pull in the .app, which is also right here in the same directory. We're going to run it on a configurable port and we have a server up and running and listening. Let's take a look at the app.js. It has a little bit more in it. But again, it's it's very simple. With Express.js, you pull in Express. Uh, we are setting up a, a web server Let me show where we have the public code. So we have the static code here. This is the basic web UI with the style sheets running the chatbot. And then we also, if we come down here, we'll see the server endpoint, the app.post. When we get a message, it comes in here. And that's really the only endpoint we need for this chatbot example. So the text will come in. We, we check for a few things like setup errors and whether the workspace is ready in conversation. We look up that person. As I said, we didn't really do a login. We hard-coded a account number, but we're pulling in person information and account information as if we had real banking services. The dummy banking services we have are right here in this banking services JS. They're very simple, but it does show you how you can call out 
from a conversation into banking services, and that could be calling out to much more sophisticated backend systems. So now we know the person, but we mentioned there was more we wanted to do with the input. Here's a little bit of masking that's not that interesting. But before we call conversation, we're going to first call tone analyzer to get emotions. So it's a simple call. We say we want the emotions out of it. And the results give me emotion tones. We're going to look for the one that's about anger. And that gave us an anger score. The anger score was just stuffed into the payload context. So again, this is input to conversation. Now we know if the customer's angry, and we can follow that path if we want to say, oh, this, this customer exceeded their anger threshold. Let's send them to support. We do a similar thing with natural language understanding, or NLU. We just call NLU analyze with the input text. Uh, we gave it some parameters that said we're interested in entities and keywords. Here, the main thing we're using is the, the entities for location. So the analyze call has its output. We attach the whole thing to the context, so you could use that in the conversation dialog. But right now, we really didn't use it. We're specifically looking for an entity of type location. And when we found that, we attached that in the payload context as a payload context location. So that was really easy and obvious when we go in. If you look at the dialog, you get into that branch info uh, part of the path. There's a location right there that said Mumbai. And when we did the call back into our application code and do a branch lookup, it's just a location parameter. Very easy to do. And NLU has a, there's a lot more you can do with NLU. But we just did a simple example with location. Um, Oh, probably I'm probably going to remove some of these other examples or document them somehow. But you could identify some companies. You can find different things that NLU just understands. This is a person, a company, uh, a location. But let's get down here to where we do start doing the callouts and the actions. Oh, well, first we have to call conversation to send it in. This is the payload and the input context, that input string, which was whatever was typed in. So now conversation followed that dialogue. It, it detected intents and entities, followed a dialogue tree, came up with a response. The response could go straight back to the chatbot uh, end user, but we're also putting actions in there, and that's what we do in this thing called check for lookup request. That code is right below here. Lookup requests, really, if there's an action, we, we go and look through these for different types of actions. Lookup balance, we did that. Um, basically, the conversation passed this action out. We called banking services with a get account info, look up all our accounts. So we know we, then we can attach that information to our response. There's another action down here. Look up transactions. I didn't demonstrate that one, but that's a fun one to try. It'll ask you for a date range or the last five. Um, and there's the last five transactions action here. If I go down for more examples, here was a branch lookup that I mentioned. And I want to show you the discovery callout. So here we are. The conversation replies with an action that says, let's do a, a lookup with a discovery action. We're going to call out to discovery, similar to those callouts I showed you earlier. But this one is using the discovery client, and it's a single call call. Uh, um, the call is query. We pass in parameters. Now, I'm using passage retrieval, so here's what you need to do that. You need to set the parameters up. Um, I set the input text in to a natural language query, and I set passages to true. That's how I get back just the passages instead of the full documents. I don't want a whole fact document. I want just the passage that applies to my input. And the response I got included passages because I asked that way. And here, if, if I got some passages, I'm just going to take the first one, index 0. So now I have a passage. But what I found doing this is, first of all, I just dropped five Word documents with questions and answers into discovery. I didn't even do any training yet. We really should do training. 
But passage retrieval, even with that, was able to find a question that was a close enough match to the question I typed in, and it really wasn't even that close. But it found the response that went with that. But what it gave me was a snippet of the document, uh, this Word document converted into HTML. And for a chatbot, the snippet doesn't look right. I, I didn't want to show just a zoomed in piece of a document. I wanted just an answer to a question. So what I'm doing in this case is I took the uh, best passage, I split it by carriage returns to get lines. I'm searching for the lines that end with question marks or are formatted like headers. Those were my questions. And once I've got past that question, then I know the next line is going to be the answer. I'm just making sure it's not an empty line. And I say once I found the question and I've got my line, I'm done, and that'll be my response, assuming I got one. If I didn't get one at all, we'll just say sorry, we couldn't find one. So there you have it. We went through quite a bit, but we ended up with a cognitive chatbot. It's able to have a conversation almost like a person with that back and forth. We enhanced it by having these nice little buttons for certain responses, but the conversation then knows how to make callouts to uh, discovery to find passages out of documents. It knows how to do callouts to your you know, banking system back end, which we just made a simple example of with these lookups. And by the way, as I said on the input, we used natural language understanding and tone analyzer to enrich that input so we could do a little bit more with it. Well, I hope I didn't take too much of your time, and I hope you really get a chance to go to GitHub, try the code out, give us some feedback, and I hope you learn something. Thank you.